The Bitcoin protocol is a distributed algorithm that was published by Nakamoto, whoever that is, in 2008. This is Rashid Gerawi, a professor of the IC school at EPFL. And in previous videos, we already led the basics of the Bitcoin and the blockchain protocols. TLDR, Bitcoin relies on this so-called ledger, which is a sort of digital book that contains the list of all past transactions. Crucially, the management of this book is decentralized. This algorithm implements the abstraction of a replicated book, replicated over all participants. And the challenge solved by the, the algorithm is that of making sure all copies of the book are the same. All transactions are ordered in the same order. In other words, the Bitcoin protocol guarantees that all contributing machines will agree on what updates to the book should be made. It solves the consensus problem with caveats that we discussed in this video. And the key to solving the consensus problem is the selection of a leader that will tell others how to update the book. In a centralized system, it's easy to guarantee this consensus because there is one central node that says transaction A is before transaction B and not the other way around. So that's easy. The idea of Nakamoto was to uh, provide this leader abstraction, this central node abstraction, but in a temporary manner. Every, every now and then, every slot of, of time, there is one leader that is elected and this leader plays this role of ordering transactions and then gossiping the information that transaction A is before transaction B. Now, the breakthrough idea of Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, was a new clever way to select the leader for the next block to be updated. The leader is elected by uh, <clears throat> what is called proof of work. People somehow uh, apply to become leaders, because if they succeed in becoming leaders, they will get some Bitcoins. And the winner is the one who is going to solve a, a big game or a Sudoku kind of game that has the following characteristic. It's very difficult, uh, can only be solved in a randomized manner, such that the probability is that two leaders are elected at the same time during the same time slot is very, very small. So roughly speaking, or essentially, there is one leader at a time that will decide the ordering of transaction. And then another leader will decide later. And the leader does not only order two transactions, but orders blocks of transactions. And we talk about chains of blocks in, in the ledger or blockchain. And because of the proof of work protocol, which we discussed in a previous video, the Bitcoin protocol cannot be easily hacked by malicious, also so-called Byzantine users. We say that the protocol is Byzantine tolerant. And it's worth stressing the fact that over the last 10 years, this protocol has never been hacked, which in computer security terms is absolutely remarkable. The Bitcoin is arguably today's most robust computational structure. But this success is far from being perfect. In fact, many computer scientists have been arguing that the Bitcoin protocol is actually an overkill. But what does that mean? So it's an overkill because it's not exactly necessary, which is precisely the topic of the video. This is Adi Serendishi, a PhD student of Professor Gerawi. And before getting to the reason why the full Bitcoin protocol is unnecessary, let's focus on the negative consequences of this overkill. It is frequently said that uh, Bitcoin is very um, inefficient with the way it uh, processes transactions. So in order to uh, to sustain the whole uh, the whole system, uh, this algorithm consumes as much energy as, for instance, I think the latest figures say that it's as much as the country of the Czech Republic, um, which is not a big country, but still, <laughs> it's quite a lot. This huge energy consumption has been heavily criticized, especially in the context of climate change. But it's actually not the only limitation of Bitcoin. It's also inefficient from the point of view of performance, not just uh, usage of energy. For instance, in order to confirm a single block of transactions, it takes on average around 10 minutes. And then uh, this is actually not enough. So if you're, you just put your transaction, in, that doesn't really mean that it takes 10 minutes to confirm it. But uh, actually to be really sure that your transaction uh, went through correctly uh, and it's seen by everyone, you should uh, in fact wait uh, around one hour. This is called the latency of the system. And still another problem is the limited throughput of Bitcoin. 
throughput is, uh, I think it's seven transactions per second, roughly speaking. Yeah. It's pretty much hard-coded in, into the protocol. And as we discussed it with Professor Emin Gun Sirar, this is several orders of magnitude less than what would be needed for widespread use of cryptocurrencies. Thus, effective decentralized transaction systems will definitely require alternatives to the original Bitcoin protocol. There are alternatives. Uh, there are actually many, many, many alternatives. Uh, but what they all do, essentially, they, uh, since they all try to implement consensus, a form of consensus, uh, they essentially end up either uh, still not really solving the problem of efficiency or solving efficiency but trading uh, for reliability or security, so sacrificing a bit of security. And crucially, this is because of the hardness of the consensus problem, which we discussed in a previous video with Professor Rashid Girawi. So the agreement on the blocks, uh, which is done by this leader-based algorithm that Rashid just explained, this is uh, essentially implementing a form of a consensus algorithm. And this is really the crux of the problem. This is why it's so difficult. And after years of work, the breakthrough discovery of Professor Rashid Garawi, Adi Serendishi, and their collaborators is that actually to implement Bitcoin, you don't actually need to solve the consensus problem. Solving consensus to design cryptocurrencies is actually an overkill. By looking carefully at the uh, original paper of Nakamoto, which is 2008, we actually realize that what is solved is almost too much. It's not almost, it's too much. There is no need to have an abstraction of a full replicated ledger in order to implement a cryptocurrency. Uh, the problem solved by Nakamoto's paper, as stated clearly in his paper, is that of double spending. You can solve this problem by having consensus, of course, because consensus will prevent you from doing that. But you don't need consensus for that. You can have easier solutions that are less complex and faster. And it is this crucial observation, along with new techniques, that allowed Professor Rashid Gerawi, Adi Serendishi, and their collaborators to design a much more efficient solution to distributed asset transfer systems. But more on that another time. While there are many criticisms of Bitcoin, some people criticize um, the law of, of energy, which is, uh, which is used by all the computers doing the mining to maintain the, the Bitcoin network. We showed that this has consensus number one. So the problem of transferring assets is easy to solve in terms of the so-called consensus hierarchy that has been proposed by Professor Hurley from Brown University. 